you might be tempted to compare Astro Gogo to F-Zero with which it shares a lot of aesthetic similarities, but it's not quite the same kind of game as you'll soon see. And the best way to get that across is to just dive into the game. Astro Gogo has two modes, Normal and Power Race, and I believe Power is just harder. Then you have your pick from several pilots, each with different attributes such as acceleration, braking, handling, weight, and top speed. And after you have your pilot selected, it says, Kick it! I love that. After you choose your character, it's on to select what cup you want to race. And I believe there are actually four cups, with the fourth being unlockable, though I wasn't successful in unlocking it. I wanted to do it before the review, but I ran out of time. So you can see it looks like F-Zero, only a lot cuter, and the camera does not pivot. But perhaps the biggest difference is that Astro Gogo is much more of an obstacle course game, in fact, it reminds me a lot of Splendor Blast, which is a pretty obscure arcade game, but it's a game where it's not really about racing as much as not hitting stuff, if that makes any kind of sense. And the obstacles in Astro Gogo are quite varied. You've got fans that will blow your craft into the air for crossing hazardous terrain, slingshots that fling you across ice, conveyor belts which can either help or hinder, and which can be reversed with a switch. And on top of all this, the usual myriad jumps and bumpers. The courses are all distinct and well designed too, with each theme offering not just different scenery and obstacles, but different course design styles. For example, this fiery planet here has a few different courses, but they each have a similar rhythm to them. They all have this tunnel followed by a series of turbo pads followed by a turn and it's quite satisfying when it finally all clicks but as much as i like astro gogo it's not without its faults for example, the traction physics on the ice make very little sense. You kind of have to tap the controller to make little turns, and if you don't do that, you will spin out. And aside from that, there's not much to make it feel like ice. For example, there's no real inertia on it. So the first dozen times or so that I lost control of my craft, I was actually fairly surprised and didn't really connect it to the way I was steering. There's one other thing I thought was horribly counterintuitive, and that's that when you land a jump, you have to land on those kind of disco paths, those blinky things, and if you don't do that, you're considered out of bounds, even if it's a road that you could have normally driven on. And on top of that, the game really does have a lot of rubber banding, which is when enemies that you've left in the dust magically catch up to you though Astro Gogo always gives you a fair chance at winning. But despite these issues, I really enjoy Astro Gogo. I got it for a few bucks off of eBay, and I do not regret it in the slightest. It's got a super cool aesthetic, a really funky soundtrack, there's nothing else quite like it on any other system, and despite my few issues with it, it has fast and fun gameplay that I find to be quite replayable. <laughs>